So I want to welcome you to my animal movement and recovery uh, series. This is something that I like to do whenever my body's feeling really tight. Uh, and like I said, again, it's all body weight and uh, you can do it pretty much anywhere. So if you're in a hotel room, if you have, you know, five or six feet of space, which is literally, if you're six feet tall and you go six foot back and forth, uh, you can make this workout happen. It's really uh, not that complex to put together any kind of plan like I have provided for you. You can do whatever wants feel the best on you. You can use this to get a really, really killer workout or you can use this to loosen up your body. The one thing I always realized was whenever I, I felt really stiff and tight and I just didn't, like I needed to loosen up. The term was loosen up and you know make sure all my muscles were activated or I was super stiff. I, I just didn't feel right. I always do animal movements and uh, they're very natural kind of flow. Uh, well, some of them are gonna look and go, that ain't natural, but I can promise you, if you get these down, your recovery time, uh, the way that your body's gonna feel, the workout you get from it, it's really, really awesome. Um, some of them might hurt your wrist because a lot of us don't do like a lot of crawling around or if push-ups hurt you, you can do them on your fists. Uh, and like I said, if your wrists are really bad, there's all kinds of modifications. So example, if I can't do a lot of bear crawls because they hurt here, all right, I need to take note when I'm here, if I'm here, I can walk my feet closer. So even though it may not look like I'm doing the you know traditional real deep bear crawl, if you have to put your butt way up in the air to take the pressure off your wrist and slowly just kind of put a little pressure on them and then go slow, that's something you start with. You do a little bit at a time. So for example, I, I just like to go into it. I, I like doing these, I practice them often. So my wrists are very strong. I started with, I have a hurt wrist. Like I said, I modified for it. So when I come up and I do start to crawl from here, if this one's injured, I come here, I lift, and I step my foot in. So now the weight is actually here, where if this is back, now all the weight goes on here. So if this is my injured wrist, I just step up, and I keep that weight on the side, so now I'm actually opening up my hip. So if I can stay low, perfect. But if I have to come high, then I can step up the next one. So don't compare yourself to what I'm doing. Comparison's the thief of joy. Okay? Do what you can. So when you see what I'm going to be doing, you're going to want to mimic those moves to the best of your ability. Tailor it, modify it, whatever you need to do. But like I said, if you need to loosen up or you're looking for a really good workout, this can be used as both. We can do these fast. We can do these slow. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some of the stretches that I like to do just to kind of warm up and then cool down with. And like I said, you can do these anywhere. You can do these in the bedroom, your living room. You can do these in a hotel room. Uh, anywhere really that there's space and that you have a floor that's not going to beat up the body, you're in a good position to do it. And I even do these outside in the grass. Uh, if I have shoes on and I'm doing something where I'm not hitting my knees, I'll put shoes and gloves on. Like I said, like the like construction style gloves that are really thick and you can do these in parking lots, you can do them in grass. Uh, some of the things where you're going to actually see me like making contact heavy on the floor, those movements I wouldn't do on a hard surface. But a lot of them are, you know, heart surface friendly. You can modify as needed. And uh, let's do some animal movements and let's work on some recovery for the full body. Since we're going to be using, uh, some of you are going to be using this for recovery, I want to also offer a few things that are going to help you uh, speed up that recovery process. Uh, I'm not going to go into the science of anything, but I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, the reason why I choose this way of eating. I did a lot of training with uh, a man named Diamond Dallas Page. And he was the one, he was the creator of the DDPY system. And I learned a lot about recovery. And some of the, you know, the things I learned about it was getting rid of the inflammation in your body. One thing I'd really like to point out is the uh, cutting out of gluten, dairy, and sugar, and alcohol. Like I took those four things out and within three weeks I felt like a completely new person. Like all the problems I had in my body went away but there was one more key element to that and it was everything was organic. So I went 100% organic eating and I, I didn't cheat on that at all. I ate smaller portions and I cut out gluten, dairy, sugar, and alcohol. And if you do those things literally for three weeks, you will feel completely different. I drink nothing but water and I got all the inflammation out of my body. Uh, I also use um, uh, like supplement into that uh, turmeric and apple cider vinegar, I found they, uh, those work really well. So do some research on all, all of this, you know, talk to your doctor. On top of it though, was the Epsom salt baths, 
and making sure I was icing, you know, the, the injury. Uh, so like if I had a, a bad knee or like a bad wrist, bad elbow shoulder, I made sure that I was taking the time to ice every single day. So on top of the diet, those are also things you need to supplement into your lifestyle. Because if you are injured, you do have to change some things up. You cannot continue to do the things that maybe a depression that happens from not being able to train affect your diet. So if you're turning to alcohol, because oh, I'm just injured and I can't do what I want, I just want to drink. Well, that's not going to help that injury get better for you to get back where you want to be. And same thing with, you know, the, the pizza and the candy bars and the, you know, like I said, the alcohol, you know, the milk or whatever, you, the cheese that you're putting on that burger, like really reel it in. Like if I'm injured and I really want out of that prison of feeling injured and like I, I don't have my own body back and I just want to move, you know, because that's that's the true definition of um, being fit to me is is movement. You know, so if I can't move, what can I really do? And that's the for me, it's the first rule of everything. You know, you got to make good moves in life, and you got to be able to move, and that's when you'll feel free. These are the things that you have to do to break into that to be able to feel free. You have to, for example, instead of eating a, a if you're going to have like brown beef, like a real lean grass-fed patty, I'm not going to cover it with ketchup and cheese and put it on a bun like I go the gluten-free route and I even try to stay away from eating the gluten-free bun just to cut back on the, the carbs a little bit because if we're if we're binge eating out of depression normally it's not you know vegetables normally it's something like chips or you know it's the, the heavy carbs and there's nothing wrong with eating carbohydrates I, I eat quite a lot but you have to let your body you have a chance to heal and that's where the intermittent fasting comes in when your body is fasted and you're just drinking water it gives your cells time to heal. And if you look at any fitness professional that is sworn by it and has actually done the research, it's highly recommended. So when I, normally I'll eat between 2 p.m. and 10 p.m., uh, nothing but water. I make sure I'm taking the turmeric, the apple cider vinegar helps with digestion. Again, it's 100% organic, no gluten, no dairy, no sugar, and no alcohol. And if you can get through with those and you're getting plenty of sleep, you're icing you know, your injuries, you're taking Epsom salt baths, and you are stretching and just trying to move your body, you will feel better. It's uh, a beautiful thing. So this is uh, my advice to you, and I hope we can help you. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the bear crawl. So a couple different variations is you can stay really, really low to the ground, or you can kind of move at the side. If I go all the way down, my goal is to stay low. So when I'm here, it's an opposite step. When I come back, I can also come here. This is a little bit easier, but the goal is to stay low. If your butt is in the air, this is okay. And like I said, it's gonna to try to be opposite. It can be same side, that's what works for you. But you have to modify. So my goal is to stay as low as possible. This one's the frog jump. A couple different ways you can do it. One from here is I'm trying to come up and out. So I'm not just launching up, I'm actually going at a 45. So I put my hands on the ground right here. So I'm loosening up my back and my hips. Now I'm coming forward. If you can only do a little step, totally fine. But when I'm here, I launch off of my legs. My goal is to come up and land. Up and land. Up and land. You can go back. Or just stay forward. Like I said, you shoot, land. So those would be your frog jumps. This one's called the cat pounce. Um, very challenging, but very fun. So I start all the way flat. So I have my feet lined up with my shins all the way down. I use my momentum and I explode with my legs so I can land on my feet. Modify as needed. So I come up and I load right here. Now I'm going to pounce and leap forward. I'm going to land on my hands and I lower myself back into the starting position. So I come forward and I land. back, I throw, load him, land. That one's the cat pounce. Next move is going to be the cricket, all right? Uh, pretty fun, very challenging. So I'm going to be down push-up position, I could be on my hands, and I'm trying to push through, or I can be on my fist. So I come all the way down, 
and I'm doing like half a push-up. So I'm here, I'm all the way flat, and I have, my feet aren't quite together, they're about hip distance apart, and I'm literally pushing my feet forward, and I'm flicking my hands back. I do half a push-up, and I push myself forward. So as I come up, I do this little pop, and I hug. That's the cricket. All right, next one from here is going to be the lizard block. This is going to be pretty challenging in the upper body, and my goal here is to kind of go with the flow of the block. So when I'm here, whatever knee, I'm sorry, so if my, so let me show you, my push up position, I want to step up with my right foot, okay? But I keep this one back, and I want to try to drive off of here. So as I'm down, Right here, I step up, so I'm really low, and I'm pushing, and I put this one up. Now I push, and now I step, and I look. So as you go through, you're gonna feel this in the upper body, but you're loading up the legs. So as I said, as I step with my left, I lower. I try to stay below my knee, and I walk, and I creep. This one right up to the next. So as this one's driving down, the other one's stepping up. That's your lizard block. This is the stalking cat. Uh, this is going to be a very flowing move. So as I'm down, I'm turning my hips low on the ground and I'm keeping walking with my arms. So when I'm here, I'm in this position, I need to lift this knee up and as I turn over and I crawl forward, I'm taking this one and I'm lifting it up so I'm staying nice and low. Where when I do something else, where I'm up here in this position, I want to creep low, 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 right here. So now I'm not up, I'm down as flat as possible and I'm pushing right here. And I'm creeping as low as possible. So instead of being, you know, up here and lowering down, and staying here, I want to get my knee halfway down. So my knee's actually pushing down, and I'm pushing off here. And it's really tough, because i got to take these short little choppy steps. But like I said, you just go like six, 10 feet, you'll feel it. This is the duck walk. I want to stay as low as I can, and step as far as I can while keeping my knees completely bent. So when I'm here, I rock up, and I get in this position. If you have to touch the ground to step, I'm pulling myself forward and I'm staying low and I step. So I can keep my hands down or if you can keep them here, you want to reach forward and pull yourself all the way in. And this one's the duck walk. This is the ape walk going forward. So when we're here, it's, it's a pretty interesting move. I'm leaning my hands forward so I can go here and put my feet forward, you can step your feet forward. My goal is to lean my hands like I'm shooting my fingers out. As I'm here, I kind of set myself. So now my heels are off the ground and it would be uh, kind of a struggle to go back. So now as my weight comes over my hands, that's when my legs get light. So as I touch my hands, my legs are still heavy. So I lean. And I'm here. So in one motion, it's a touch. So when I go back, I'm here, hands, feet, hands, feet, hands, feet. And that's going to be your ape walk forward. Ape walk backwards. So this is going to be the same thing that we did for the first move forward, but now we're going to be traveling literally the opposite. We're going backwards. So when I'm here, I want to make sure that I'm doing the same thing that I did going forward, but I want to throw my legs first. So when I'm here, and I'm in this eight position. Now, what I do is I take my hands and instead of leaning them forward, I'm actually putting them back like this. So I put them between my feet, and now as I lean my weight back, my feet will hop. So when I'm here, so every single time my hands touch and my weight comes over my hands, it's time for my legs to become light. So my legs are halfway back, put it forward. And it's literally just a guide. And you'll glide right across the map. This is gonna be our ape walk sideways. 
So when I'm here, I'll do both sides. So from here, I start low right here. So I'm in like this low ready position. I want to take my hands where they're directly in front of my feet and my toes, and I want to put them over. So you can do it. So your right hand goes in front of your left toes, or you can go even farther where you get your elbow over your knee. That way you'll really feel the stretch. So when I'm here, I want to throw my hands, and then I throw my legs because I put my weight actually on my hands. So I touch, and I throw from here, and I sink down. So if I go to the side, Next one's going to be the playful ape. So I'm going to be from here and I'm in this position forward. Okay. So we start ape walk here. Now we're going to be at an angle. I want to stay a little bit lower and I want to put my hands out in front and I go to my left. So I'm angled to the right. If I'm going forward here to my right, I'm angled. I take my hands and I turn it. So now I'm looking here. When I want to go back, I just continue to move. Playful aim. This is the inchworm. So I start with both of my hands, I'm sorry, both of my feet down, and from here, I want to try to put my hands down. If you have to bend your knees, completely fine. Okay, I'm here, and I'm going to start walking all the way to a push up position, and then I continue to walk as far in front of me as I can, and then I start to walk all the way. So my feet are touching. Forward. I go back. going to be the snail. So I'm going to start out on my butt and I'm going to be moving towards my back. So when I'm here, I reach back with both hands, go on your fist if you need to. So from here, my toes are pointing forward. I'm going to drag either on the heels or I can go on my feet. From here, I take my butt, I lift and I sit down. If I go a little bit farther, you won't have as much control, but I lift and it's kind of like I'm shooting it through. So I grab, lift, Lift, and I go through. You can also go forward, pull. These are really challenging, good in the core. This is gonna be the worm. It's gonna be a lot in your core, and you kinda of have to think of how a snake moves. It's, it's slithering its body to pull itself forward. That's what we're doing here, we're like a worm. When you see him moving forward and go, that's gonna be the goal of what we're doing here. So we're just digging through it. I literally start all the way flat. So I'm here and I have my hands together. So now I put them down here. I turn up on my side, okay? I'm trying not to bend my knees too much. I wanna lift my hips up and I pull with my abs and I get up on my shoulder. So I get on my side and I lift my butt and I pull through. Now from here, I turn over, get on my side Pull through. That's going to be your worm. What's really great about some of these is you can actually wear socks when you do them. This is one I do recommend you wear socks and maybe even knee pads. Uh, but on a soft surface like this, it's not so bad. So what I do is, this is the seal walk. I take my hands and I turn them all the way here and I put my hips down. Now, I lean to one side. If I lean to my left, I step with my right. So now as I'm here, I'm pulling my hips and I want to try to get my knees off the ground. So I'm actually using my lats and I'm locking in my shoulders as I drag my core. And that one's your seal walk.
These are gonna give you tremendous upper body strength and they can build the core as well. These are your gorilla poles and there's a couple different ways we can do these. So I'm coming all the way flat here and my goal is to reach out and pull myself, all right? So the more difficult way is you can lock your feet, you can bend, but I'm here and I'm pulling here. So I grab, and if you're not strong enough to, the, uh, to do these yet, what you do is you grab, you flex your lats, your shoulders, your core, squeeze your glutes, and you just pull down with dynamic resistance. Open back up, grab, and I pull from here. So I can be posted, my abs are tight, I'm using my lats, and I pull myself forward. I reach and pull. I reach and I pull. I can post out with one and I grab here. So it's like a side grip. I come up, right here. Or I can reach forward and push myself. And that's actually another, like I get this as a, an addition to this. If you're here, you can push right here. Very challenging. So when you add into it, I'm here, I can do one forward, one back, and then you can even do like a push up here, one here, loosen up the back, and then pull yourself. So that way you're getting like that total upper body pull motion every time you do it. <laughs> this is gonna be the playful eight. It's a really, really fun move. Let me show you a few modifications into the full sequence here. So when I'm here, I wanna come down like a squat, and I want to end when I land on my, my butt and kind of rock on my back. So when I'm here, I squat down, and now I rock back. So now from here, you can keep your momentum going, or you can do this little pause. Now I take my feet, and I throw them over to one side. If I'm rolling over my left shoulder, put my left arm down, I look to my left. So from here, I throw my feet over. So when I come over top, I'm not rolling over my neck. It's not underneath me. I'm over my shoulder and I push right back up. So from here, I come down over the right, and that's without stopping, and I pop up. If you wanna be a little more advanced, you can roll back and spring yourself either over one shoulder or straight back. So when I'm here, I squat down and I roll up. So as I come down, I'm throwing my feet. So I squat and I roll. Or you can jump. That one's a playful ape. All right, this is gonna be a full joint mobility routine. I like to do this before I work out, when I wake up in the morning, even after a workout, just to kind of cool down. And um, you know, I even do this before bed sometimes, just like a little routine. I start with my neck, and literally, I put my hands up, I drop down to the side, I roll. So if you want, just follow along with me. Normally I do about like, Sometimes if it feels good, I do like nine or 10. So see how it comes side to side. See if stuff's popping, cracking. Now I lean back and now when I come here, I'm actually leaning all the way forward. Okay, so if you feel like your shoulders are tight, sometimes it could be your neck, all right? Even your jaw being tight. So I'm here, I'm pushing my neck all the way forward. I'm pulling it all the way back. I push it forward, pull it back, forward, back. Now here, like I said, we have the rolls. And like I said, if you find something that feels really good for you, do like 10 of them, do 20, do it for a minute, do it for two minutes, loosen up, but do something that's gonna kind of counterbalance it. So just don't do your neck, do your hips too, do your whole body, okay? So now the other thing from here is a figure eight. So now I can look down, come around, rock down the center, around, forward. So I'm actually making a figure eight that I can go back the other way. The other thing is I can make a figure eight forward, around, forward, Around, back, forward, back, forward. So any way you can move your neck, that's kind of where I like to do is like, so back and forth, up and down, circle, side to side, figure eights, move that neck. From here, my hand's down by my hip, I reach over, and I pull down. Now I'm not literally, I'm not pulling. I'm babying my neck, I'm just slightly pulling. And sometimes I'll hold for like 10, 15, 30 seconds and just kind of loosen up. Now with the shoulders, I roll forward. Like I said, I like to do 10, 20, just wherever I feel warmed up, and then I pull back. Forward, 
back, up, down, up, down. And if you want to alternate right here, my arms open, I twist and lean, twist and lean. So now I'm starting to open up my hips. I'm keeping those hands up as high as I can so I'm not letting them drop. Now I look away. So if I'm twisting my thumb down, I look away. If I twist this thumb down, I look away. I'm starting to move here. Now I can start twisting my legs. Now I'm getting loosened up. Okay, with one arm. Don't overspin on these. I get full range of motion. Okay. I do like five, ten. I usually I don't do any weight. I just start body weight and I'm not whipping it. I'm just opening and here. I do the other side. I do three back. So I'm, uh, now the elbows. So when I'm here, you start with wrist. Okay, I start moving your elbows, rolling them in. Now I'm pulling in here. When I want to loosen up the elbow, I start to make a spin like this to see the rotation of the shoulder. So when you start building this up and you feel comfortable, then you can start opening up here, then back. And you're gonna feel this in your shoulders, your elbows, your wrist, kind of open up. Now from here I clap forward, and now I clap back right here. So it's here, back, here, back, here, back. I start to build my way up, and I might have to lean, and I'm just opening up. Nothing crazy, reaching over top, Pulling it down, reaching over top, pull it down. And I start to open up my hips and my core. Nothing crazy. Keeping my legs straight. Turn. Just moving those hip joints around. Good. Now, I start to move my body the opposite way. Nothing wild. Just enough to loosen up the spine. Now I drop my head down with it. You can fall all the way, as low as you can. We come back up, come back, windmill, so I can keep them forward, reach down, touch. I can come back up, I can reach down and touch, or I just come back side to side. This one's for your hips, I pull straight up. This comes over, I turn it out, I set it down. This one lifts up, Turns over, set it down. So I'm up, turn, down. Up, turn, down. Open, up, turn in, touch it. Up, turn in, touch. I can make circles. So now see I'm circling to the outside. And I can also circle inside. Right here. So now I'm just kind of feeling my body loosen up a little bit. We're gonna go down to the knees and the ankles. When I'm here, I start out and I roll my foot all the way over. So I'm flat footed, roll, open, open, I take it back, both sides, roll that ankle. Like I said, I'm not going crazy. I'm just moving my body. It's nothing. I'm not trying to put anything on it. Now with my knees, I kind of bend a little bit, just bending. And now I start to make lips. You can do little, tiny little circles. And then you can start really opening up here and go the opposite way. And you might look at this and go, there's no way I'm trying that. Start slow. You don't have to do exactly that if you know it's going to hurt. Literally, you're starting to start move, move. You're just joint mobility. It's not a workout. It's a warm-up. It's a cool-down. It's a feel-good. It makes you feel really good. Other from here, I start to take it down. And now I'm going to work from the floor. This is what I like to do. So I start on my feet, get everything loose, and now I come down to the ground. I like to start out, same thing with the neck. I'm coming down. I'll give you guys two angles. I'm really, really, really heavy on my hands and I'm really, really light on my neck. So I tuck my chin and I drop down to the side, drop down to the side and just lightly back and forth. Now I'm starting to roll. Right here I have no weight on my neck at all. It's totally relaxed. All the weight's in my hands. From the side, I'm keeping my chin tucked so I'm not on the top of my head. I'm trying to get to the back. I like to do about 20. And then I put my hands out to the side, load my hips. Side, 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 side. I like to do about 10 of those. Now from here, I'm just loading up my hips. Bring it in, swim it through. Palm up, keep my elbow down. 
turn it up and see the rotation. Now, I take it in front, pull down. I take it back in front, down to the side, turn it over, and in. Went all backwards, but now we got it. So this from here, I start side to side. I get my circle motion. And now from here, I want to start kind of like rotating it up. So I take this one down. Oh, I'm sorry, I got to I got to shoot through. So I'm shooting this one through. And I take it down. We got to make sure we get the back of that shoulder. Now I can hold my hand, push myself away, loosen up, and then lift my hand. Come through. <sighs> Wrist and elbow. Post. Oh, pull back. Lift up and twist. Down and back. And send. do 10, do 20, do 50. Do whatever feel loosens you up. These are just different motions that you can run through and try. Okay? Now from here, I want to make sure I'm getting like, I want to have a good buildup. I want to make myself kind of like elastic and I want to loosen up my entire spine at the same time. So now from here, I come down, I set, I roll my hand up, I tuck my chin, and I push myself forward. This might not be possible to start, but I'm working on loosening up. And I really feel it in my low back when I do these. And the same thing, I want to get like, um, I call it the plow walk. So when I'm here, so like in yoga, they might call this the plow. When I come up, you might be here when you start. Inhale. And so you can take those feet down and you can pull those knees in. Now from here, I can keep them straight and I literally just start walking side to side and getting used to being in this position here is very difficult. You just got to keep your breathing calm. You'll be good to go. The other one is going to be all the way flat right here. One hand sucks in, that same foot is going to kick up, kick to the sky and I roll myself over, I post up, and I reach open. Hold for like 30 seconds, however long you'd like to. Take it over, switch, open, kick it up and flip. Last one, I come here. Now, I lay on my side. And I get up right here. I step over. So if I lay on my right side, I'm laying on my right arm. I step over, keeping my knee up. And I put my hand that's on top in front. Now from here, I'm not dropping down. I'm lowering my nose. Okay, now I'm crooking this up right here. Down, up, down, up. So I'm not dropping up and down. I'm lowering, manipulating the neck from here. So on the other side, I sit down and I lay on this arm right here. I line it up, I step over, and I push myself up. And from here I post, lower my ear, raise up. Lower, raise. Lower, raise. To finish out, this is one of my favorites for my low back. Post out, wrap, and twist. So I'm trying to get this foot all the way flat and I twist over. Hold for 30 seconds as many times as you want. Come over top, get your grip, and you're gonna feel to stretch out your glutes. The other thing from here is I sit in front, I'll take my right foot, and I put it on my left knee. So if you're watching me at home, it's gonna be uh, your left foot, right knee. So this comes up, and I plant this right here. This is on my knee, and I inhale. And I try to sit down into it right here. I started here. It was really bad. Now, I'm starting to loosen up and this is breaking in. This one comes over top, and I sit into it. And this will stretch out the piriformis muscle. Make sure that between like doing this mobility routine, find which one feels the best for you and dissect it. Pause in between, try it, do 10 reps, do 20 reps, see how you feel. But never push it to the point where you feel like there's gonna be injury. You're not supposed to be sore after doing these. You might be a little sore, but you really want to feel good, so don't put too much on it. Working out means you are worked 
out. There's no more you can do. Right now we want to build. So this is the warm up routine. You can play with some animal movements. Keep your diet in check. Make sure you're eating clean for low inflammation and uh, make it happen.